fam, what's going on? I'm Zach Jack here, and I'm not gonna sit around and talk about how bad the notch is on the Pixel 3, but what I will be talking about is how the camera or cameras got better on this phone. So we already know that Google excluded themselves when it comes to multi-lenses because the Pixel 3 is a returning one rear camera. Now it's the same 12.2 megapixel and aperture as last year's Pixel 2, but everything got better with software and that's how Google does things right. Now right off the bat, you guys already know that the Pixel 3 takes the best picture that's on the market right now. That's a straight fact and come on man, that high dynamic range though. The blue in the sky and the reflection from the buildings had this nice contrast, which definitely improved from the Pixel 2. And this is probably the most color accurate camera I've seen on a smartphone yet, because colors from the environment really do pop to the human eye. The Pixel 3 camera tracks the edges nice and balances out the shadows at the same time for a nice detailed shot. But sometimes a detailed shot comes with a blessing and also a curse. I feel the Pixel 3 camera can definitely over sharpen pictures to a point where it can get a little uncomfortable to look at for a long time. And in my opinion, it can make the image a little unnatural, as if something Bob Ross painted. Now, I'm not saying Bob Ross has bad paintings or they're whack, they're pretty lit, but you know what I mean. Now, on the Pixel 3, digital zoom is back, no optical zoom, which us consumers prefer, but Google improved it again through software, and they're calling it their super resolution zoom. And it's still slacking on the quality for me a little bit because the image did seem a little noisy for me but honestly i didn't care that much because 99 percent of the time i'm not using the digital zoom anyways now one feature i want to talk about is playground and it's basically augmented reality and i like that google included some of the marvel characters because i'm a huge fan i do want to note that they did a cool touch with the characters overlaying a shadow with the environment that you're seeing through the screen so that was really cool but it's a little difficult positioning them to exactly where you want. Now back with pictures, Google included Top Shot, and basically it's your lens pre-taking little snapshots on the frame before you actually press the shutter button. Now this happens when the lens detects movement in the frame, so you never miss that perfect shot. It's a cool feature, but when you save the pre-snap photos, quality does slightly degrade a little, but with image processing from Google, it still does look good. Now Google's portrait mode looked better than ever because they did a nice job keeping the subject in real focus and blurring out the background. This allowed them to keep the edges sharp, not soft, but nice and tacked. But I did notice that sometimes it can keep a portion of the background in focus with the subject. But honestly, this does happen in every smartphone when it comes to portrait mode. But I just saw this happen more often on the Pixel 3. Another thing I noticed that depending on lighting, portrait shots seem to have a more cooler hue compared to the iPhone XS Max portrait mode. I don't prefer cooler colors all the time, but it wasn't so much of a deal breaker to me. The last thing I did notice was sometimes on portrait shots, the edges can leave this subtle white hue. Now this is not immediately noticeable, so it's not something to completely complain about, but I just wanted to share the information with you guys. Now, if you guys watch my previous videos, you know I'm a fan of low light photography. And the Pixel 3 did not completely disappoint me. I just felt like sometimes shots can be a little more dull and overbearing with the shadows. I still prefer my S9 Plus when it comes to low light photos because it has a better aperture, but you know, I still like it. Pictures aren't bad at all, but I expected a little more when it came to low light environments. Now the least exciting was videography. You can still 4K record up to 30 frames, not 60. I don't know why Google didn't upgrade to that, but I must say that the OIS is almost impeccable. Probably one of the best OIS I've seen on a camera, right next to the Note 9. And you can record up to 200 frames, but not at 1080, it will be at 720p. Yeah, when it comes to recording, video processing is probably worse than image processing on the Pixel 3. This is something I can understand because when it comes to majority of the users, including myself, we take more pictures than videos on our phones. Now onto the next thing, let's talk about the new thing that Google brought on this Pixel, which would be two front-facing lenses on that deep, low, horrendous, beautiful notch. Now before I get to why there's a second lens, the Pixel takes the best, sharpest front-facing photos, so you have a lot of fun with those Instagram selfies. 
And speaking of selfies, they added a wide angle secondary lens so you can take groupies. Yes, groupies. A corny term I read on the internet, but I couldn't take one because, you know, I'm forever alone. But anyways, them adding this extra lens did kind of make me appreciate the notch a little more because sometimes I do want front facing shots with exposing the background more. And now I can do that with the Pixel 3. But again, the video quality can be a little trash depending on the lighting you are in. Over here, it just seemed a little too grainy for my taste. I feel like the Pixel 3 is definitely worth of a buy for its camera. Don't worry about the notch. Just do not worry about the notch. Google's image processing is amazing. It's the best camera you can get on a smartphone on the market right now. And the best camera on a smartphone yet. Well, until the Pixel 4. It will definitely not disappoint you. And that's what we have. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and finesse on that subscribe button. It will really, really help me out because I enjoy making these tech videos for you guys. And let's end it off with fun fact number 41. Google in the 90s, or well, late 90s, was named, was originally named Backrub. Backrub.com. Yeah, that's the late 90s for you. Hormones were exploding everywhere. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Zachai. Stay tech strong and deuces.